Hey guys, it's Thursday, I believe the uh, 30th of August. I got an ABS light in the F-250 and I'm going to change the ABS sensor. I put the scanner on it and it told me the right front ABS sensor is losing communication and I checked the plug. The plug seems to be okay. So here's what we did. Get you guys tightened up on the stand here so this thing isn't flopping around. Okay, <clears throat> I unplugged the pigtail which goes up underneath this uh, mud guard here. <clears throat> if you can see, there's two pins in there. Put a set of alligator clips on that and then put your digital voltmeter on it, which we have right here. Set it to AC volts and uh, check this in comparison to the other side which I've already done um, I assume you guys know how to use a voltmeter but basically if it's not reading 0.05 volts when you spin the wheel um, you're probably having problems and I checked the other side it's po reading 0 0.05, 0 0.06 AC volts I spin this side and it's not even reading 0 0.03 and I know what the problem is and I'll show you here Let's see if there's enough light. Camera doesn't have a light on it, but right here I've got a piece of tape around here. This truck had bigger tires on it before I got it, and it's actually, if we peel this tape off, it's actually rubbed through, and the wire's exposed and starting to corrode a little bit. And it worked fine all winter. I didn't have any ABS problems this winter with it. But I noticed about a month ago, a couple times, uh, when the roads were dry and I hit the brakes, I had a little err uh, with the brake pedal or a stutter stop. And now the ABS light's on full time. So we know that there's a fault here. I put the snap on scanner on it and it told me it was this one. But if you don't know which one it is, that's a good way to test it with the voltmeter. But you can see, there we go, right there. That's rubbed through. So this thing is bafungu. We will. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, I've got the wheel off already. Um, got the wheel off. I believe that's a 21 millimeter or 7 eighths. It's real close. Next thing you have to do is you have to pull a caliper bracket off. I've got a socket on it right here, but you have an upper bolt right there and then a lower bolt. Let's see if I can show you right there. So we got to take those off and then hang the caliper. It's kind of tight quarters for the old camera, but we'll uh, see what we can do here. Sorry about the shaky cam. I'm trying to extend the tripod out. Come on, tripod. Work with me. guys in the picture here basically I can't hold the camera and work the impact I'm not as good as pisser I can't do this stuff one-handed <clears throat> so we'll take that 21 millimeter we'll zip that caliper bracket loose Some guys will put a lug nut back on to hold that rotor straight. You can do that. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> this thing's had the calipers off recently. Take my pry bar. Get that out of the way. Some guys like to suspend this so it doesn't fall. I'm going to spin it around and set it right there. That doesn't really strain that hose too much. Okay, and the rotor has to come off. Maybe. Maybe not. 
not so easy. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna grab a hammer. And, yeah, I don't really want a hammer on it. Never mind. I'll just give it a couple good whacks here. Yeah, I'll tap on it with a hammer. Why not? I'm not gonna hit the face of the rubber. There's just some rust bound up in there a little bit. Come on, baby. You have a good day. Okay. And now we have access to the ABS sensor right here. Okay. And what we're going to do, we're going to take some compressed air and we're going to blow off all the crusties around here, eye protection required. And uh, then we have to take off the bolt that holds that on. I think that's an eight. And then basically unclip this harness. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you what we're doing here. Uh, let's see, I don't know what size this is. Five millimeter to take out that Allen head down there. And you want to be careful not to get a, any debris down in that hole because there's a little reluctor wheel down there and the sensor's got a magnet pickup on it. <clears throat> and as this wheel spins, that's where it picks up the signal. So we're going to take off the uh, the bolt that uh, holds this cable on up here, which I did sort of pre-loosen these. They've been off recently, so they weren't tight. But in order to save a little bit of time, I do that. And this broke free pretty good. These are Harbor Freight Allen keys. Uh, I don't know that I recommend the long ones. I wish I would have found the short ones because I've been cutting these things off. They have the small ones have too much give when they're too long. So sometimes these spin right out, other times they don't. So I'm going to get a little pair of pliers. I've actually had to pick the broken off tip out of there before because I've broken them. I would prefer not to break that sensor because if that's if I can't get it out, then I'm buying a hub bearing, which is expensive. Oh God. Eh, it's gonna need a little PP oil. Never, uh, never had a Ford one out before. I've only done the GM ones, which seem to be a regular occurrence. I don't know what they make their hub bearings out of, aftermarket ones. Buy the most expensive one you can buy or you'll be changing it frequently. Sometimes it helps to pry up underneath it a little bit, but oh, there's a lot of rust underneath that one. That may have been as simple as cleaning that off, but just get a little pressure underneath it. Wow, that baby is in there. I'm give that a little blowgun action here because I see some rust crust trying to creep up in there. And I don't want rust down in that bearing. Alright, onward. Let's see if I can get this baby.
in case you guys haven't noticed, I like to talk to myself a lot and talk to my my work. Oh boy, that feels like a bad day. Is what that feels like. Ooh. Well, I got lucky. Oh boy. Take a look and see if there's some grease in there. There's some schmutz in there. Let's see if you guys can see that. Mm, let the camera will focus for me. turd down in there. I need to clean that out. So I'm going to get a magnet and a little pick, see if that's rust. I think it might just be grease, so hang tight here. That would definitely cause a fault in that sensor. What I'm going to do here, so that that gets a good surface, I'm going to clean up the top of this mounting surface. I'm going to stuff a towel down in that hole. I got most of that crap out, but I'm going to put a towel down in that hole and I'm going to clean that up. So I will turn you guys back on in a minute. Okay, we got that. our hole cleaned up. And what we're going to do next is put on some of this dielectric grease. We put that on the sensor and on the uh, top of where that <clears throat> sensor mounts. Hopefully uh, this solves our problem. We've got uh, Quite a bit of crust under there. Okay, I think you guys can see that. And then we check to make sure that the new sensor and the old sensor are in fact the same length. I've run into that with the GMs before, so let's see if I can. Make the camera go crazy here. You see those are basically the same length. The original one was a Siemens Timken, so let's see, this one has no markings on it. This is probably China whatever <clears throat> for 150 bucks. Uh, you can fish these things through the backing plate. Somebody has uh, already fussed with this one before. It's just kind of a monkey, you know what. There's supposed to actually be a tab here that somebody's 
bent up and broke off. Usually you can cheat bend that tab up to get the sensor out because that covers the top of the sensor. Got the other one out. I don't remember how I did it, so we'll just sit here and fuss with it till I get it. or probably the factory procedure is to pull the wheel bearing up, out and uh, pull the dust shield out of the way, but we're not playing that game. Somebody's already been into this once, so. The only difference I saw, <clears throat> this one has a double O-ring on it. The other one looks like it had a single. Maybe this is an improved style. I'm not quite certain about it. So we're going to roll with it. It's the same length, and hopefully when I go to test it, it's the proper, proper one. Hopefully we get some voltage showing out of it. And just a wiggle back and forth. Oh, that's already almost seated. Good. They actually give you a new bolt with it too, which I thought was interesting. I don't know why you'd break one of these taking it out, but I guess if they were crusty enough you would. I'm trying to figure out what I did with the old bolt here. I don't know. <clears throat> Any hoozle. They're supposed to be torquing this to 20 foot-pounds. I'm going to put my little stubby 3 8 ratchet on here, and I'm going to make it snug. 20 foot pounds seems a little ridiculous, but there is a little brass insert in there. Alright, there's no doubt in my mind that that's tight enough now. You can see there's some dialectic grease squirting around it. I'm going to leave it as such because <clears throat> I don't want that thing. Coming back to haunt me. Uh, let's see, get that out of the way for now. Put my bolt back in to hold that to the knuckle. These little rubber grommets are not in the right spot. there. 
video is probably getting long and boring as hell, but we got that one in the frame up here. That's got to pop out. Let's see if you guys can see that. That's the other end of that wire. That's just a push in, so. Pops right out. New one pops in. That should be real close to what we're trying to accomplish here. Let's get some test leads on this. Boy, that son of a bitch is almost too short. I have to do some uh, finagle in here. Oh no, that'll be okay. So, hope you guys are all having a good week. My week's about over with here. It's winding down. Boy, this is going to be a bear. There's just no fun way to do this. It's so hard to get the probes of the voltmeter where you want them in here. reading quite a bit more voltage in the other one might be pulling the other one out and cleaning it up because it ain't reading nearly this much Spin the wheel. Oop. Ooh, hey. Oop. Almost knocked the camera over there. Trying to hold these voltmeter probes in here. See, we got... Oop, I just dropped it off, but you guys saw it had voltage on it, so... We're gonna put it back together and uh, check and see how that goes. So the next thing is to put the rotor back on, put the caliper back on, put the wheel back on. Okay. Caliper and caliper o bracket.
I like to get the top bolt started first and then tap the bottom in. Some bitch is almost too short. She's a little snug. Place. You definitely don't have any extra. Of course, I slid these stupid things and they're probably in the right spot. Still more snug than I'd like it to be. Oh, a little more penetrating oil in there. Oh, come on. There we go. Got a little play on each side of that. All right, calipers on it. Just gotta tighten that up real quick with the impact and we'll put the wheel back on and uh, get her back together. Shouldn't come off, but okay, and that's that's it. I will bring you guys back. This video is already probably 20 minutes long. I'll bring you back after I get the wheel on and uh, check for codes. Hey guys, I'm back in the truck for testing this uh, ABS light. Making sure it doesn't come back on. I put the truck back on the scanner. I ended up cleaning off the the driver's side uh, sensor as well as replacing the passenger one, which was basically reading nothing. Um, they still read two different values, but maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. The way I believe the ABS system reads those sensors is when you start up and start driving, it reads a value on uh, the difference between the two and it sets that as a base and then as you drive um, if there's a fluctuation then it uh, that's when it applies the ABS that's when it kicks in so I could be totally wrong on that but I did put the snap-on scanner on it <clears throat> I had uh, three coats in there one was a uh, uh, I believe it said right front wheel speed or ABS sensor uh, cognizant error or fault. I think it was fault, not error. And then uh, each side it also had a an error, um, like a startup error.
air when you start it up and it doesn't sense them and I'm pretty sure that came from me having the sensor actually unplugged and starting the truck so I could turn the wheel. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but with the Ford pickups, and it might be the cars and SUVs too, if you just grab the, uh, the steering knuckle and turn it with the vehicle off, it'll puke power steering fluid out the vent. So I always start this truck up to spin it, and therefore the key, or the engine was running, and the computer sensed that the sensor was not plugged in. So I wiped all those codes out with that skin, and... Uh, driven it a little bit but we're going a little bit longer now and uh, normally uh, I'd have a, a light come on here so we'll watch it here for 30 seconds and see if it pops on usually it would pop on immediately now after I first replaced the sensors I hadn't reset the the computer <clears throat> excuse me cleared the codes and I wanted to see if it would actually turn the light out, and it did. But even that being said, I did wipe the uh, ABS fault codes out of it, just to be double sure. So it doesn't appear that it's coming on. It usually comes on pretty quick. I mean, you don't have to drive very far, and it'll pop back on. So I think we may have fixed it. I also did check the, uh, uh, using the scan tool, went into it. <clears throat> and uh, check the wheel speeds as I was driving the truck uh, just around the parking lot, you know, up to 10, 15 miles an hour. And all the sensors are reading the same wheel speed, uh, both the left and right front sensors and the one over the diff in the uh, rear of the vehicle. And they were all reading, um, all reading the same. So I think we may have licked this problem, we'll see. Um, it was kind of funny because a week or two ago this all started and I was coming back from the lake and it's about a 70 mile run and about five minutes after I got on the road that light popped on. Now when I would go to stop it didn't give me any uh, any pedal pulsation or anything like that like the ABS was confused or going nuts but uh, then this, the light actually went back off but then this past uh, Friday on my way to the lake I popped right back on and it has been on ever since and has not gone back out so I have to believe that that's what it was I mean there was rust under both of those sensors but that right one was uh, bare from where the bigger tires had rubbed that um, cord to the sensor itself so I don't have that problem now I got factory size tires back on the truck uh, I think that's going to be the end of that problem, but we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll check back with you guys if I got any problems. Maybe somebody uh, can put their two cents in on this. But uh, other than that, I think it got it kicked. I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to drive up and go to the lake tonight. <clears throat> I really don't want to start any work tomorrow. Start a three-day weekend. I'll we'll try and make it a four-day weekend here. If I leave tonight... I'll have all day tomorrow to mess around. I want to grease the uh, rudder shafts on my boat, which I may show you guys that. Um, I don't know if there's a Zerk fitting on them or not, and I have had them out of the boat before <clears throat> when I first got it because uh, I needed to rebed with sealant the uh, mounting surface of those they had been weeping at one point in their life and they're actually starting to weep again through the bolt holes so I need to pull them off and re bed them again. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what caused it. The props I had on the boat before had so many cavitation pits in them where it actually burned the metal away um, that the props were cavitating hard all the time which caused a vibration and I think that tur severely turbulent water behind the uh, props which would be where the are located probably uh, put some strain on that too so I got a little I, I don't want to say it's a hard steering issue but uh, I don't have power steering or hydraulic assist steering on the boat and uh, I just think it should steer smoother than it has I guess I should have read my um, manual when I had the rudders out originally seven years ago and uh, it, they say you're supposed to grease those shafts every year but <clears throat> When I bought the boat, there was actually a little mini grease gun on the boat, and I'm halfway wondering if that's why that grease gun was on the boat. So, if anybody knows anything about uh, inboard boats, uh, twin screw inboard boats, and uh, knows anything about greasing those rudder shafts, uh, leave a comment for me. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> but 
uh, I, I didn't really look to see if there's a cirque on there. I really hope there is because uh, there's no way to grease them in the water. I'll be scuba diving for those and looking for a wooden plug to beat in the hole that they fall out of because I'm sure the water will come rushing in at quite a rapid pace. So anyway, guys, I'll catch up with you later. If I don't, have a great holiday weekend. Be safe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one later.